Okay, so we're going to look at another example of finding the average rate of change uh, for the function. This time, it's an, a function actually in terms of t. S of t is equal to um, 1 all over t minus 1. And we want to find the average rate of change. on the interval negative 5 to negative 2. Okay, so once again, we need to figure out first out what the points are. We know what our x values are, and we can figure out the the y value would be, or the s value, because it's s of t, um, with those values. So if I look at s of, looking at negative 5 wherever I saw an x, and I go in and I'll put in a parentheses wherever I see a t in that function. So this is equal to 1 all over, I see a t there, so parentheses minus 1. Put in that negative 5 inside that one parentheses. This gives us 1 over negative 5 minus 1, so 1 over negative 6. Pull that negative out front if you want, so negative 1, 6. So we want to do the same thing, but we want to do it with the x or t value of negative 2. And now when t is negative 2, plugging it in wherever I see a t, I get 1 all over negative 2 minus 1, so 1 all over negative 3, or negative 1. So negative 5 comma negative 1, 6 was one point, and we saw negative two, negative one third was another. So finding the average rate of change between those two points, or just finding a slope, change of one, so negative one third minus a negative one six, all over negative two minus negative five. negative one third plus minus a negative one six all over negative two plus five so that's going to give me three so again complex fraction we can clear those complex fractions by multiplying by the lcd of the fractions within the fraction or order of operations you would have to simplify this as in the numerator as a single fraction and then this is like um, a fraction divided by another number, so and both multiply. Okay, so I like to do it the first way I told you. Looking at negative one third and one six, my LCD would be six. So I'm just multiplying this by a fancy one so I can clear my fractions. So I'm gonna multiply both the top and then um, the numerator and the denominator by six. So distributing that, well, that's six times the negative one six. Six is, I'm sorry, six times negative one third. Three goes into six twice. So it's going to leave us with a negative two in the numerator. And then the six times the one six. So six is canceled. So we're just really left with plus one all over times six. Negative 2 plus 1, that's negative 1, all over 3 times 6 is 18. Pull a negative out front if I wanted, so negative 1 over 18.
Okay, so I want you guys to try one. So let's have you guys try it. And then we can go over it. But um, let's say you have f of x is equal to the natural log of x. And you want to find the average rate of change on the interval 1 to e. And then just in case you need a reminder, the logarithm, the natural log, normally a y equals log base b of x. If it's a natural log or base, this value is just e. So y equals natural log of x. So the same thing as log base b of x. And recall that um, logarithms can be rewritten in exponential form. So another way to write this is e to the y equals x. So these are all equivalent with one another. A little stipulation that has to be on there is that when we take the log of something, that value has to be greater than zero. Think of the domain. So see if you can find that average rate of change um, between 1 and e and the natural log of x. So if you're watching this live, or, um, watching this and not live, then maybe pause the video. I'm going to stop the recording and then come back and go through it. OK, so great job. You guys were getting it. Um, let's go through it. Um, so we want to find the point. We have our x value of 1. And so if we look at f of 1, so plugging in 1 wherever we see an x, this is going to give us the natural log of 1. So by definition of logs, this is saying e to what power? What are we raising e to to get back 1? And so recall um, anything other than zero raised to the um, zero power is one. And so this question mark, this is equal to, I'm sorry, is zero. So e to the zero is one. So we have a point at one zero. Oh, so that's like you find it in here in a second. And then we want to look at when our x value is e. So if we do that, we're looking at f of e. So this is equal to natural log of e. So our base is e, and it's saying e to what power gives us back? Well, e to the first power is e. And so we know that question mark is 1. And so we also have a point at um, e so let me just do it on the top of the page so I can have it all together. So we're taking the slope, which is our change in y. So 1 minus 0 all over e minus 1. This is going to be 1 all over e minus 1. So for instance, if I had this on an exam and I don't allow you to have a calculator on the exam, you would just leave it in this form. Just make sure um, if you're doing your homework on my math lab that you look at the form that it wants it in. So it might say put it in decimal form and round it to this. Uh, and that just might save some heartache if you read that and so you know and you're not getting it wrong. Let's move on. 